Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Government has confirmed a delay to the procurement of new electricity generation. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the implications. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. We've already had delays to the so-called emergency round, but now renewables have also been affected. That's correct. You know, the risk mitigation round, uh, it's controversial. That's the power ship heavy round. But it's not, it's not only power ships in that. There are also hybrid renewable storage projects there. Uh, that's been delayed several times, four times in total. We were initially supposed to close that. The financial close deadline was the middle of uh, 2021. It's since got shifted as we added three new projects, uh, 11 in total, uh, to September, then January, then the end of April. And now we hear the new deadlines the end of May. Uh, so that's been shifting. Now the renewables bid window five. Um, that was supposed to close at the end of April as well. And we have new deadlines announced for that. As well. So we've got going to have a first tranche of about 14 projects hopefully closing in the middle of the year, and then uh, the, the final 11 of the 25 closing around September, October. So that's, that's the new uh, dates that have been announced formally. And we're doing this at a time of stage two load shedding and ongoing threat of load shedding throughout winter and uh, an admission out of government as well as Eskom that we have a gap of between 4,000 and 6,000 megawatts that we need to fill. So these are quite serious delays. There's some disagreement about the cause for the delays. Yes, you know, we had this uh, big gap in procurement. So the last time we actually procured any electricity through the RPP office uh, was back in 2014. Those projects were procured by the DMRE and the RPP office, but Eskom, under the previous management, refused to sign the power purchase agreements. And we only saw those power purchase agreements eventually signed when the new Sir Ramaphosa administration came in after Jacob Zuma exited. And that was in 2018. Those projects have then subsequently been built. Most of them are entering the grid now or have entered the grid. But you can see it takes a long time once you reach financial closure eventually uh, to actually uh, start producing electricity. Uh, even though these are quick build relatively, you know, they have renewables, they have solar and wind. So we've had this very long protracted period of not getting into the procurement rhythm. So now we've restarted after getting a new RP in 2019. We eventually restarted the renewables round, but prior to that, we had this risk mitigation uh, round, which was heavily uh, criticized, continues to be heavily criticized. It's trying to put uh, square pegs in round holes, and it was very much aligned to a gas power ship type generator. Uh, anyway, the, those 11 bids have come in, so we, uh, th there's, there was a lot of dislocation around that, a lot of legal objections, environmental objections. And then what we saw under the radar, a uh, number of the projects uh, for the renewables program trying to also tick all the boxes, cross all the thresholds. And uh, there's been disagreement, you know, is it Eskom's bu uh, budget quotes that are the main cause that haven't come, of, uh, has the grid access unit been sufficiently capacitated uh, to, to uh, service these RPPs? And Eskom denies that is the cause, but that is the cause from the RPP office and the DMRE size, that's what they say is delaying things. Or is it just that we haven't got into this rhythm again? The architecture of the bidding process for bid window five was changed. Uh, there were some local content thresholds that raised eyebrows right up front uh, that didn't look me uh, that they could be met, particularly in the solar PV space, because you know you haven't procured for seven now eight years, and now <laughs> suddenly you want local capacity to fill uh, to fill these projects, and we don't really have that manufacturing capacity in place. Then we have the, the disruptions globally, COVID, uh, uh, as well as the Ukraine war, which has really disrupted the supply chains. And we've started to see the prices, not just of oil and gas rising, we've seen the prices of wind and solar components rising for the first time in many years. And there are serious supply chain is issues. And these are against the context of fairly aggressively priced uh, projects, you know, that we announced last year. 
projects that are in the 42 cent a kilowatt type range. So now when you are going to go procure those, those components, procure the engineering and construction services, there's been inflation in the system. So those uh, have a knock on effect. So I think there's a number of moving parts here. I don't think that the finger can be pointed specifically at the grid access unit of Eskom. I think there were some capacity challenges there. But I think there's a number of other issues. And whether bidders maybe took a risk uh, and said, well, we will get an exemption from the local content and we will just go ahead and make a commitment to that and then now found that actually these exemptions aren't flowing. I don't know, uh, but it seems possible. So, so, but I think it's really that we got off this regular tempo of procurement and we're now trying to start it. I think we may be we're so, somewhat ambitious with both the risk mitigation, uh, but also the bid window five, both around the architecture as well as what, how the bidders responded in terms of pricing. And those chickens are coming home to roost. Do you think the new deadlines will be met and what are the implications for future procurement rounds? It's very hard to say. I mean, the risk mitigation deadline of the end of uh, this month looks very, very unlikely for some of the projects. I think the hybrid renewables storage projects, hopefully those projects will be able to move ahead. But there's a fresh legal challenge uh, against the license approval for the car power ship projects. So I'm not too sure if that's going to be resolved by the time we get to the end of the month. Can Eskom sign uh, contracts or PPAs with a car power ship where there's these legal uncertainties? Has the gas pricing uh, framework really been settled? <laughs> it's not clear uh, whether NERS has really settled that and whether it's satisfactorily settled. Many believe we should just uh, dust off our sandals and move on from that risk mitigation. It was badly thought through, badly designed. I don't think with any ill intent, but I think in the end, you know, you've made a mistake around the way you've designed the so-called technology agnostic <laughs> round. And maybe you just have to admit that this is not working. But government seems very committed uh, to moving ahead. The president in the States of the Nation said we'll move ahead with those that are ready. And he indicated that those that are ready are around 800 megawatts. That seems to suggest that the car power ship projects won't be ready because they were 1,200 megawatts of the 2,000 megawatt allocation. So maybe that's how we'll <laughs> you know, square the circle, but that's very unclear. And then I think there are serious challenges still to the bid window five projects closing in July and in September. But hopefully we'll get through somehow. Uh, we're in an emergency situation. They need, something needs to give. We need new... Uh, capacity coming onto the grid. Some of the 2014 capacity is now coming onto the grid, but we need to have this 20, uh, 20, 20, 21 capacity now coming onto the grid. We've got a massive gap in the system. We're feeling it every day with load shedding. We have to get these procurement systems uh, and processes into a regular well-oiled machine tempo if there's going to be the centralised uh, procurement as the main methodology. Obviously, there's other th changes that are going to change uh, underway in the electricity supply industry that are going to change the way we procure or, or contract for electricity down the line. But at the moment, this is the main game in town, other than the 100 megawatt reform. And that also requires the grid access, access unit of um, Eskom to be ready with uh, giving uh, letters to the RPPs in terms of budget quotes and having firm contracts around how you going to connect to the grid and at what price, even when these are self-built. So uh, I think there is still risk of further slippage, but we can't afford it. We're already into bid window six, and probably bid window six's architecture should have taken into account this. It hasn't. It seems to be very similar. So we might hit similar problems with bid window six, or we'll see a, the market respond with far higher prices and maybe more realistic prices both to meet the fact that local content thresholds, as well as the, the shortage in the engineering supply chains and the shortage of renewables components globally. So maybe we just need to accept that there's going to be an uptick in the price prices bid so that we can cover this period um, of higher inflation in the energy market, as well as the fact that we don't have some of this sort of inbuilt capacity. We've lost it through seven, eight years of not procuring. 
So I think some a reality check is needed. It can't be business as usual at the IPP office and the DMRE, especially when they talk about bid window six, bid window seven, following soon thereafter, a gas to power round of 3,000 megawatts coming, a coal round of 1,500 megawatts coming. We need to sort out our, uh, our systems and our processes. Otherwise, this gap that we see is not going to be 4,000 to 6,000. It's going to be much larger. Already, people are warning is that, that it is much larger than that. And we are going to really have much more protracted and much more intense periods of load shedding. So we have to get our act together. It has to be get this act together this year. And we've got to iron out these, uh, these issues that are currently in the way of either the centralized procurement going ahead at pace or the uncentralized procurement, the 100 megawatts. We really have to get our heads around that. And we have to act with a far greater urgency than we are at the moment. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.